This is Antitube, and this video is part three of the uh, restoration of a uh, Singer Featherweight uh, motor. I should call it rehabilitation. Um, when uh, part two I managed to get one of the wicks um, back into the with the spring and everything back into the grease tube. But I, I pulled that out and threw it away afterwards. And you remember these kind of dead worm pieces that were the other grease wick <laughs> that I destroyed with the crud cutter. <laughs> so we're going to toss those too because they're no good. And uh, what I want to mention though is that if you read some of the comments under part two, there were viewers who talked about how they cleaned the wicks and one used a lacquer thinner and the other used mineral spirits to, to clean the wicks and said that they, they both did well. And if I understood them right, they just laid them out and, and let them dry afterwards and that they were reusable from that. And uh, one of those same viewers uh, mentioned to me about trimming the end of the wick like I had that one piece that was just so hard and black and he said before he cleans it he just uh, trims that off with a razor blade he just shaves a little bit off and I asked him well won't that make the wick too short and clever fellow that he is he said, if it does, you can just uh, stretch out the spring a little bit that, that holds it in there. I thought, that's a brilliant idea. So what he's saying is if you pull out a wick and, and you do need to trim off a little bit, you could just stretch the spring out a corresponding amount to be sure that when you put the wick back in, uh, that the wick protruded into the bushing area a little bit so that it can make contact with the uh, shaft of the motor to lubricate it. So I wanted to share all that with you and uh, this is one of the springs here and it's a half inch by three sixteenths inch and one of the comments also on on video two was that uh, a fellow said what do you do when there's like no wick or spring i said oh uh, i said maybe you know maybe you can find a, a, a similar spring um at the hardware store and so i told him i'd take a close-up picture with some uh, measurements of it so i'm going to show you that slide right now Okay, so a half, a half inch by a three sixteenths. Okay, so from what I could tell of this uh, tube from the inside of the silver cap down into the bushing area is about an inch. And uh, the spring is a half inch okay and I have found a replacement I'm going to put in new wicks and I I found a replacement wick that I'm going to use I bought it at a McMaster car in Santa Fe Springs California and uh, the item number 86 I don't know if you'll be able to see that. 8767K22. Firm felt cord. 3 sixteenths inch diameter. And 5 feet long is the shortest... <laughs> the shortest um, length of this cord that you can buy. And it was $5 and something. 
and then of course you got to pay the shipping and then their shipping uh, least expensive shipping I could choose was $7.95 for packing and shipping but I ordered it on a Saturday afternoon and they delivered it Monday evening so under 48 hours to my front door <laughs> California to Tempe and when I ordered it they said okay we'll deliver it Monday and I was like, I was like sure sure okay so anyway here's what they sent me they sent me five feet of this uh, wool cord just like this and it's marked three three sixteenths five feet and uh, it is 95 percent wool I'll put the link to the page where this is on their website I'll put the only place I can put it is in the description area below the video but I will put the link there and you can see uh, they, they talk about the density and the and the pounds per square inch and the, and the heat range is minus 50 to plus 200 and that's 95 percent wool you know and uh, it is nice and dense so I've cut off a piece of this and used it as a new wick and I put it up into the spring halfway and I pre soaked it preloaded it or pre charged it with motor lubrication and uh, I worked it back in there and you can let me see you can see it's just kind of protruding here and it's a little spongy from the spring you know and uh, it went pretty well and for the motor lube I had ordered uh, I had ordered this motor lube from the featherweight shop so retro grease uh, motor and gear lubricant and that was 10 bucks and let me show you what it looks like here and I'll tell you why I went ahead and ordered it they give up uh, some pages here with uh, colored pictures uh, about how to do it all how to how to use this and they they have a little ziplock here full of these cut um, tubes that are, are just like when, when I cut the, the q-tip and poked it in to get the grease out they give you some of those and it's in the instructions about how to remove the grease and then how to put the grease in and it's got a nice little rubber sealing tube and this nice curved applicator and you squeeze it in there and they tell you all about it okay so I went ahead and did this you know over the years I had talked with so many people who had been working with sewing machines repairing sewing machines selling sewing machines that told me just use white petroleum jelly like the unscented clear white Vaseline and so the only other motor I did like this was a 301 so that's what I used but this uh, was recommended to me and I looked at the website for the so retro grease and they had a very convincing uh, video showing uh, several lubes and greases and showing the melting points and uh, that's what's convinced me when I saw how this reacted to heat compared to Vaseline let alone the other greases so uh, I, I went ahead it was $12.95 but they had it marked down to $9.95 and I think that was free shipping and it, it got here really quick you know it's a very respectable uh, the featherweight shop so I'll put a link to the page where they sell this also if you're interested so I'll link to the uh, wool cord wicking cord and I'll link to this okay so 
um, that's what I I preloaded the wick with was this grease, and I'll show you about I'll show you how I did that in a little bit. So I I have another piece of wick that I cut at three quarters of an inch. So so my tube length is about an inch. This is a half and this is three quarter, which would be one and a quarter, right? But uh, from what I could tell, these, this wick uh, is put inside the spring about halfway, about a quarter inch. Uh, let's see, how did I do this before? It went so easy the first time on the other one I did that I said, well, I got to remember that when I'm doing the video. <laughs> but I think I just kind of put it on there and push and twisted. Once it gets over the edge of the wick, then it then it keeps going on and twisting pretty good. But you got there. You have to get the whole end of the wick in past that first part. And then we'll just keep twisting it until it's about halfway in there. Okay? So what we end up with is about an inch or a little tiny over an inch, but it's about an inch, okay? So that should fit the, the space well. Now for pre-charging, I, I thought about, um, you know, taking this grease and smearing it on the wick and kind of rubbing it in and stuff. But the idea, I wanted to saturate this wick because that's supposed to be what happens when the sewing motor warms up and this lubricant slowly melts. It becomes more like an oil uh, liquid and it's supposed to wick down through the wick to the bottom so that when it's rubbing on the shaft it's continu continuously lubricating the shaft and the bearing. So that is why I decided to heat, heat it. So I just took this empty tuna can and put a holding screw in it and I'm just going to put some of the grease in here uh, like so. And then I'm going to put some of the grease up on the wick itself. Now that's really not going to get warm enough on the top to soak in. But, but once, once it melts on the bottom, I'm going to roll it over with a barbecue stick or something. And... Uh, then the grease that's on top will be on the bottom. Okay. I don't have a little uh, stove or anything like that. So this, this becomes my little heating dish. And my holder is just a pair of uh, uh, vice grips. And I'll just get it on here. And kind of hold it like this. Okay, so you're having a good laugh now, I hope. <laughs> my wife did. <laughs> what are you cooking there? <laughs> so uh, I have my uh, lighter, but uh, you know, butane lighter from the dollar store, and that's going to be my heat source. And I'm just putting it up uh, towards the bottom of the can there and heating it up. And I see. See that? I get a little puff of smoke there. I don't know if that's from uh, the bottom of the can or uh, there. It's already kind of melted that grease. So I'm going to just roll that over so the grease on the top now is 
more on the bottom because one thing I did notice is that when it did wick it up it does the wick is absorbent so I got five five yards which would make like at least 60 of these wicks <laughs> and I'm gonna have like 58 wicks left over <laughs> So the total price was like $13 and something for these wicks, okay? And, you know, that's actually, I guess, not too bad. Uh, I saw some wicks on a website that were for a model 1591, it said. They were sold out, but they were $9.95 plus shipping. So I guess 13 something for these two wicks isn't that bad. And it's like, how often are you going to do this? You know, those original wicks in this machine were there for decades, so these should last decades. Just going to let that cool a little bit. I think I might heat it up a little more and try and. Uh, it's okay. I was a Boy Scout. Whoops! I was a Boy Scout. You know, so uh, it's okay for me to to handle fire and stuff like that <laughs> just want to uh, get as much of that grease melted and roll the roll this around in there to get it up so put that down and unhook my holder just let that cool for a little bit and then I'm going to put it up uh, into the grease tube okay so I was thinking I I, I always hear about all of these um, mm, groups like on Facebook and Yahoo and and who I don't know where else and, and blogs uh, for vintage sewing machines and they have slant groups and featherweight groups and all this. So as a group, I could see, uh, you know, a bunch of people going together and saying, hey, let's buy some of that wick and we'll have a wick replacing party or something. And then if you, you know, you get about 60 wicks out of it, right? <laughs> so, you know, even if 10 people did it, you'd be paying like a dollar thirty-five. For your set of wicks <laughs> so mm -hmm, I thought well I might go in the wick selling business right like two wicks for three bucks plus send me a self address self address stamped envelope and three bucks and I'll send you a pair of new wicks <laughs> okay so let's see if this is uh, this is yeah this is cooled down now let me grab my little wick out of here and just wipe it around in there a little bit. It leaves some residue in there, but not much. And the wick is pretty saturated. I, I know that. Let me show you the cording so you see the difference in the coloring. You know, it's, it's pretty, pretty souped up with that. So, I'm going to set up here and we're going to put the new wick in. Okay, having done this a few times, uh, it seems for me to put the wick in from the inside. Okay, and then uh, manipulate it from this side. And I'm not sure why. Because as near as I can tell, the, the grease tube is right in the center of that um, grease tube. But the hole is closer to this opening. And it's farther from this opening. So it's like this gives me a little bit more room to get an angle. And then it's closer here to use a barbecue stick and needle and stuff to, to feed it down into the hole. So that that's how I do it. Now this was a new method to be based on the viewer mentioning in the 
part two comments uh, about when he, I think he did uh, his 1591. And, uh, you know, he was saying you can put the wick up into the spring and maybe you can get it in there. He said the 1591, everything was a lot more accessible than this. So, I'm just going to get that in there. And I keep one finger on the back to kind of apply gentle pressure on that wick. And, of course, it's, it's sticking way way too far out here now but I'm gonna try like I did a couple times now to get the edge of the spring turning that 90 degree corner with the spring was the hardest part and now the spring has a wick in part of it which makes it a little bit harder Oh, I hadn't done this through the camera either. <laughs> I, I got to try and look over the top of the camera here or something. Um, I did find with the wick in there halfway, it makes the spring a little bit harder to get started down in there. So if you saw my other video, the, the spring went in pretty good. And this, this time, it, I when I did the other half of the motor here to practice before the video I had the same kind of problem I'm having now getting it to turn that corner and get started down uh, into the tube took a lot of fiddling around just like this hmm. I thought maybe since I'd done it once, it would be a little bit easier this time. Now I just have it barely turned down in there. Let's let's take a look at the back. See how I'm I'm kind of trying to get an angle down down in there, kind of pushing on it like that. Just to keep a little bit of pressure on it. And it's really the barbecue stick moving one little coil of that spring at a time and pushing it down, you know, like a 32nd of an inch kind of thing. And what I found was once I got the spring in there, I couldn't use the barbecue stick anymore. Because there was, it would just slide right off my new greasy wick. <laughs> there, there was no spring to grab onto and manipulate it down. So that's when I had to go to either my paper clip or a needle. But you, you see, you see now, I've probably got it in there halfway, but the entire spring is down in there, and I want to keep pressure on this as I, I push it push it down in there let's try uh, well let, let me let me try this a little bit I maybe the smaller one I didn't think of that this little smaller wood stick again I'm, I don't want to damage my new wick right but actually that grips a little bit better There it is. Huh. Um, so can you can you see that the wick is in there and just sticking up a little bit? Uh, maybe that'll show. I can't tell through the back of my little camera. What if I backlit it? Oh, that's worse. I think you can see that wick sticking up there. Okay, so what I did then was I, I put the bigger barbecue stick in here just to 
to like this to kind of brace the wick up into the hole and then I whoops I got it upside down then I took my bent paper clip and I just wanted to push down a little bit in there and see if if I thought the wick was flat you know if it uh, where, where's my wick if, if I what I'm looking for is that is that the week the the wick came up in there like this and that it didn't you know like bend the spring or get all messed up so through the top I'm going inside the spring and I'm just feeling around like does it feel level all the way around and I don't feel like a bent um, coil of the spring in the middle of it or something like that because I can't see in there so when I go like this I, I I don't feel any spring in the way and if I go sideways I don't feel so I don't think the spring is hosed up and then uh, it's about that far down in there which you know about a quarter of an inch from the lower edge of that silver cap it's where I can feel the top of the spring where this cap comes over and then straightens out the spring is right up in there so that's why I did a half inch spring a three quarter inch um, wick with the wick turned up into the spring about a quarter of an inch or halfway and it feels it feels really good now so let me let me uh, turn this over and we'll see if we can uh, see that uh, wick down in here uh, if it's going to mm -hmm. right if it's going to um, protrude into the bushing mm -hmm. looks pretty good to me so what my um, plan is when I go to put this together um, and I, I seems like I demonstrated this in part two but I'm going to uh, get it started onto the shaft and use a, a little needle or stick to just compress the wick a little bit and get and get the shaft slid on and uh, whoops <laughs> it's better when the wick is when the grease tubes upside down like that Okay, now once I get everything reassembled, um, my plan is to, will be to push down a little bit on that wick and make, make sure it's good and push it down against the um, motor shaft and then I'm going to fill the the spring and this little top of the tube with the new lubricant mm -hmm. but I'm not going to put the lube in now and I'm not going to uh, assemble this yet because I want to uh, clean the commutator and uh, get the commutator polished up and I was told about the eraser, pencil eraser type, different rubber eraser type. And I had planned to use my diamond stick, actually put this in a drill and run the diamond stick on it. But, uh, man, when I look at those copper pads, how thin they are, wow, they are so, so thin compared to the slant motors that I have done that on many times so I'm going to try um, I got I got a couple of erasers I don't have a pencil eraser but I have the 
pink pearl, which is what the good pencil erasers were made from. And I have a 15-year-old Sanford Magic Rub eraser that I actually, uh, my art student daughter left when she moved. <laughs> she had a ton of these laying all over. And I've hung on to it, and I like it a little better. But I'm going to try those to clean the commutator and stuff. Then i got to reassemble the motor. And then I've got to do something with this broken wire tip here and stuff. But I'm happy about uh, replacing the old wick with the new, um, with the new wicks and, and uh, getting this grease. Now, personally, I don't think I would use that grease um, the way they show on the gears. Um, it's too, it's too wet of a grease, in my opinion. If it, if it melts that quickly from the heat of a motor, I know those gears run hot because I've played around with them a lot on the 301 and so forth. So I think I'm going to stick with my TriFlow clear synthetic grease on the gears of the machine. But uh, this is definitely a hydrocarbon grease. It smells like it doesn't smell synthetic. And again, uh, look for the link below the video and you can watch the my video this video and you can watch the video on the on the featherweight shop site and see what you think and again if you were with a group you know it says it's about 12 milliliters look at all this grease I got I mean I could do a I don't know a couple dozen more motors maybe <laughs> so there we go I'm going to stop it here, and then I'll come back for part four and work on the rest of this. But I'm pleased with finding the new cord. <laughs> the, the wool cord. Wicking cord. Okay. Ta-da! Thanks for tuning in. I hope you felt that was worth your time, or at least uh, entertaining. And that you maybe come back and watch me play around some more in number four. Take care now.